And one of the strategies that I always tell individuals, young individuals that want to start building is I always say, hey, leverage credit cards, but this is what you need to do. You need to contact your credit card company literally every quarter. <laughs> Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and uh, welcome to Jeff Koga Live. And uh, I decided to record this episode of uh, the podcast and or video, depending on where you're looking at. And it's called The Book Smart and Financially Dumb, The New Millennial Problem. Now, I decided to record this because um, I'm looking at the analytics of the viewers and uh, looking at who's been watching the stuff and come to realize there's tons and tons of people actually in the millennial generation now it kind of makes sense why is because I am in that generation as well so um, I decided to record this because I've come to realize there's tons and tons of Millennials who are really really book smart okay and in terms of a practical knowledge so they know a lot of stuff and which is great all right um, but what I've come to realize is that when it comes to the finance side and the financial literacy of understanding how money works uh, such as compound interest such as simple interest even things as amortization schedule things of even like simplest thing of how credit card works uh, have been a, kind of a big question mark as in like hey they don't know it now rightfully so it's not nothing on their part I believe you know why is because uh, I think our education system is one of the huge component that's really really flawed is they don't talk about this stuff you know um, unfortunately that they don't and even to a point where you know I have clients that actually have MBAs and stuff like that in business and uh, it's really interesting where when they say things like hey Jeff I remember you know learning this in an MBA class but I just never knew how it applies in real life and uh, I, I got a kind of chuckle and laugh because it is so true right like sometimes uh, being book smart as in hey having information in our brain when you go into the real world and practicality and how actually um, it works it's dramatically different we know this okay so let's talk about some financial literacy and simple things uh, for y'all young listeners okay that I think that uh, I can bring some value in and it all has to do with number one thing that you got to understand is how I think the powerful thing is how credit card work works okay I cannot stress that enough okay it's one of the it's one of the most powerful tools that you have on your tool belt that if you understand the power of how to use it you can legitimately make money using a uh, debt all right, but a lot of times people use that debt for wrong reasons. So I'm a firm believer that there's good debt and there is bad debt. All right, not all debt is bad, as long as you know how to use it. Now, especially if you understand how interest rates work. So, so let's talk about first thing, how credit cards work, okay? Credit cards are considered to be what they call a revolving line that's based on compound interest, uh, meaning that interest, if you have 15%, 20%, whatever that interest is, then it's being compounded every single day. That's why if you have a credit card, look at your statement, you'll see that it'll say on their daily interest charge, okay? Guess why? It's because based on the balance that you have on that particular day, they're charging you interest for that, okay? and. Uh, the most dangerous thing is how your credit card payment is set up. So previously to this, the minimum payment required for a credit card uh, was less than 1% of the actual balance. All right, And that just recently changed in 2009 or so. All right. Now, why is that? Is because the federal government got involved because they started seeing the, the ginormous amount of debt that people have, and they're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. We got to help the consumer understand how this works. And on top of that, what the federal government forced the credit card companies to do is to force them to put, like, kind of on their uh, credit card statement, how long it would take you to pay off the credit card uh, balance based on the current interest rate. All right. So, so if you look at your credit card statement and you look at it, there'll, there'll typically be a category. It can be in the front or it can be in the back all right now regardless of what it is it'll be on there because now it's a federal law and I believe it's required now um, where they'll say hey based on your current interest if you keep on playing you're paying your current interest your balance will be paid off in X amount of years or X amount of months 
all right? They didn't have that before, all right? And for the folks that are listening to this and, and they remember, like if you're like kind of like the older millennials, right? Or even maybe Gen X or baby boomers. And if you use the credit card, you remember those back in the days, they didn't have that on there. So so if you didn't understand how interest works, you'll be like, oh, cool, I'll just pay the minimum payment and pay it, pay it. And you just realize that, hey, you know what? The, the balance keeps on growing every single month, especially if it's high interest rate. All right, so that's number one. So you making a minimum payment on credit cards, don't bring your debt down. So then the question is, how do you bring it down? Now, there is a financial tool that's really powerful if you understand it, and it's called a balance transfer, all right? Now, what is a balance transfer? Balance transfer is literally what you're doing is like refinancing your current debt, all right? And you're, you're going to refinance it, meaning that you're going to open up a new credit card. Now, if you say, wow, why do I want to open up a new credit card, okay? It's meaning that because when you open up typically a new credit card or you use the credit card with no balance on if you have that, and then they'll have what they call promotional interest rates, whatever it is, but it's a lower interest rate than what you have. And what you do is you take your balance of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 10,000, 20,000, whatever amount you got, and then you roll that balance over to that lower interest rate. So that way, at least your minimum payment, even if you're making a minimum payment, right, that 0%, it will attack your principal versus just paying for interest, all right? And it's really important to understand the difference when you make payments, like, hey, where does your payment go to? Does it go majority to interest? Does it go majority to principal, okay? And one of the things is this, is that if you do a balance transfer with a balance on it, meaning that if you have a $1,000 balance on it, for example, and that's running at 20%, and then you do a 0% transfer on top of that, all right, that means that another $1,000, you have a total of $2,000 on your credit card balance. One is at 0%, one is at 20%. Now, when you make your monthly payment, if you just say, hey, you make $50, let's just say for easy math, you make a $100 payment. Now, that $100 payment, Guess where it goes towards first. Now, if you guessed it goes towards the 0%, you're 100% right. Why is because the banks want to keep on what? Paying your interest rate over and over, right? So be careful on that. The other one is transactional fees. When you do this right at a 0%, there is a fee for that, right? Typically, it can range anywhere from as low as 2% to 5%, and there's caps on it, right? So, so you got to be paying attention to that, how much it costs to actually borrow the money, right? It's kind of like a, let's recall, call it a refinance fee that you're going to have, all right? Now, now those are some common, common traps. Now, leave a comment below wherever you guys actually listen to this, okay, on how to leverage this. And now, I'm gonna give you some practical advice once you understand how to use this, okay? And first, you gotta get out of debt, right? Like, pay that off, especially if you're running at stuff at 20% interest rate, 30% interest rate on credit card debt or something like that. It's ridiculous because that means what? You're paying that much in interest every single month versus paying that off, and then once you're off, you're back at zero. Nothing's wrong with being at zero. And then from there, if you have the ability to borrow, then guess what? Now you can use that 0% to make money, all right? So for example, right? One of the strategies that I always tell individuals, young individuals that want to start building is I always say, hey, leverage credit cards, but this is what you need to do. You need to contact your credit card company literally every quarter. Request them to increase the credit line every single quarter, right? Now, why do you want to do that? Is because when you start doing that, right, your credit line goes up, meaning you might start off at 5,000, you tell them to increase it, they'll go to A, you call another three months, it goes to 10, another three months later, it goes to 12, another three months later, it goes to 15, and the next thing you know you have credit cards that have what 20,000 uh, credit limits 30,000 credit limits 40,000 credit limits right and that's how I kind of did it at my young age uh, when I was what like 1920 and uh, Washington Mutual at that time and they gave me a credit line because I had high credit credit cards limits of hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now what can you do with that credit line right now keep in mind these credit lines right are revolving lines so you have access to it so number one on your credit report and credit profile it will show that you have that. Now, when you show on your credit profile that you have these credit lines, a beautiful thing happens. Other banks will give you money. Why? Is because they're going to be like, hmm, this bank is willing to give this person a credit line, a credit limit of 10,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. Heck, you know what? They're not that risky because I'm not the highest credit limit. So let me go ahead and give them slightly less than, less than what they have, right? Same thing with if you want better, what? rates for your cars, right? They're gonna be looking at that kind of stuff and they'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, look at this. They have multiple credit lines open with the credit history open on their uh, uh, credit lines that are open and they have high limits on those. 
right? So it looks good. Now, the other one is why your FICO score will go up is that if for whatever reason you decide to use the credit card because an emergency happens or, you know, you want to take out an investment or you make a purchase, right? They look at something called credit to debt ratio. So for example, right, if you have a thousand dollar credit limit on it and an emergency happens and you have to use what? $500, you're at what? 50% credit to debt ratio. All right. Now imagine that same credit card, you're at a credit limit of 10,000, an emergency happens and you happen to use a 500 on that, right? You're at less than 10% of your uh, credit to uh, debt ratio. Okay, so when they look at that, they'll be like, oh, okay, that's not that bad, right? And that's why you want to continuously increase that, okay? And when you continuously increase that, guess what? Your FICO score slowly, slowly starts creeping up. And when you do that, you get better rates um, when you buy houses, when you buy cars, and also at the same time, if you want to take out business loans or whatever you do, okay? Now, here's a final advice as I end with this, is that as you do these 0% transfers, because I learned this from my mom, um, is that... Make sure you make your payment, the minimum payment on those 0% transfers as you pay a balance off, um, at least five uh, business days before, all right? And make sure that you pay attention to making sure that the payment posts. And she told me that, Jeff, remember this, you know, the 0% stuff, it's tricky. Pay attention to these uh, things and read the fine print. Um, and then she flips over the credit card statement and then they have like all balance transfers have these little small forms. And I remember, you know, she's pointing at it and she was just like, look right here, it says payment must post per due date or uh, it will adjust or something like that, right? And since then, I remember, since uh, as I'm older now, it says, hey, and that's why I'm a stickler when it comes to like uh, paying the debts and uh, making sure that uh, um, if you are using those zero percents, making sure that it doesn't adjust, right? So. So that's my advice for any of the millennials to at least because I know some millennials out there, you know, you guys have revolving credit cards and you guys have debt on there and you might not be paying attention to what interest rate you're paying. So I highly challenge you to look at that and not only look at that, but also put it on a spreadsheet, you know, QuickBooks, that son of a gun, okay, if you know how to use QuickBooks, whatever it is, and then track where you're currently at because if you don't know where you're at, you don't know where you're going to go. All right, so again, that's my advice for any of the young millennials out there and look at your statements and find out how you can become financially literate because I'm telling you in the next 12 to 24 months, we're going to see some very interesting things in this economy uh, when it comes to the stock market, when it comes to the real estate market. And uh, um, I want to make sure that you guys are in position to take advantage of what's about to happen. We're going to see some big, big stuff happening in this economy. Um, sheer fact of uh, um, what's going on with the presidency, uh, what's going on with the stock market, what's going on with the real estate market, right? And what's going on globally. And uh, uh, pay attention to it because if you got to first uh, take care of the current stuff that you got going on and when you take care of that stuff um, you're gonna find opportunities on how to actually make money right and how to actually grow your wealth and how to uh, um, build true wealth right so that's what I got for y'all I gotta get into the office here uh, thank you for whoever's watching if you listen to this on the podcast make sure you go to iTunes leave me a review and if you're watching this on YouTube leave a comment below and I will go ahead and talk to y'all later on if you're on Facebook thanks so much for chiming in on this live recording uh, take care and bye bye